All right, the easiest way to learn methods and to practice methods and to understand how they work is really just to step through an example um, that uses methods. So that's what this, this uh, video is gonna do, is just kind of walk through an example. Uh, I'm not gonna be coding here. Uh, it's just easier to see um, how methods work, the way they're set up, the way they're arranged, you know, kind of what they do uh, by looking through examples instead of trying to build stuff as we go. So um, hopefully, or, or my hope is that you'll be able to take what we do here and translate that into your own programming. Um, but we're going to talk about all of the sort of the pieces and parts and what goes where and, and why and that sort of thing. And then we'll also trace this program as we go. Um, and this is a program from uh, midterm or prior midterm. Um, and actually that we, we did on the review. So um, we'll step through this and hopefully it will answer any questions you have or just provide examples uh, and, and we'll be able to make some, um, some strides in terms of how you understand methods and using methods within Java. Um, so the first thing uh, you'll notice is I have the code open here and I have just a spreadsheet open over here. And what I'm gonna do with this is just, as we, as we encounter different things, um, as we work through um, tracing this program, I'm gonna just record them over here. So mainly what I'm interested in, in keeping track of are variables. So much like we've traced variables and programs in class, uh, that's really kind of what I'm gonna aim to do right here. I'm gonna trace this program and keep track of, of what values are stored where so that when we get to the end of this thing, um, we, A, we can see how it all worked together and B, we'll be able to see what the final output should look like. Um, so let's start at the top, right? Um, when we're talking about methods uh, as we have in class, it's where we began to think about the idea of scope um, in a really big way. And scope meaning, you know, uh, which pieces or parts of your program can see different things. And in particular, um, what you'll see right here is we have four variables. These four variables all have a static defined in front of them. For now, we don't care uh, why that works or what that does just for the sake of, of our purposes now. We're gonna define static in front of anything that we consider to be a global variable. Now, global variables uh, are visible to everything in the program. So they're visible inside each individual method, each individual try catch block, each individual uh, code block that maybe you define within your program. If it's something is declared as a global variable or as a member variable of the class, it's visible to every other piece of that class. So you'll notice that these variables are declared inside the class, but they're outside of every other method that's in the class. Um, and so basically, like I said, everything in, or each method can see that these variables exist. They can, uh, they know what values are stored there. They can write to them, they can read from them, that sort of thing. Um, so we have four basically global variables. And so I'm just gonna outline those right here. We have one that's called class name. Uh, it's a string. And we initialize it with the value of ISIS355U. We have another num, uh, variable called professor. Um, it's also a string and it has the value of merit in it. Uh, and then we have an, uh, another variable called max class size. It's an integer has the value of 10. Uh, and finally, we have another variable called student count. It's also an integer and it has the value of 15. All right, um, so there's our, there's our values, uh, or I'm sorry, our variables that are global variables. These are declared, again, inside of our class, but outside of any method. So that means that every other method can see these class variables within this particular class, okay? Um, so once we've, once we've established those variables, uh, basically we're gonna go back to where we, where we start every program, right? It's inside of our main method. And if we look at our main method and we look at the first line in our method, the first thing we do is we call this method called increase class size and we give it the number five. Now you can tell that we're calling a method because it's a name and uh, parentheses. And uh, there can either be a value here or not a value here depending on the way the method is defined. If we go down here and we look at, uh, I'm just gonna collapse these so we can see all looking at the same thing. Um, you'll see that there is a method down here. Um, for now, uh, the modifiers that we're gonna keep, um, just going forward until we talk about uh, otherwise, are gonna be public static. The next thing that comes is the return type. Now, if, if the return type is void, that means there will not be a return statement inside the block of the method. If it's anything other than void, for instance, um, boolean or integer, These are, this is going to be various data types, it's going to have to have a return statement. So we're going to use that keyword return. But because this particular method is void, that means it doesn't return anything back, 
It also means that we're not, we can't have an equal sign here and we can't assign some value to some variable because there's nothing to assign because again, this is not returning anything back to where it was called from. So the void just means it's gonna do something, maybe it's gonna adjust a variable, maybe it's gonna print something to the screen, uh, but the point is we don't need to get any more information out of this method directly. So we're declaring it as a void return type. Then we have the name of the method. Now, pragmatically, these names of methods should indicate what the method does, largely. Uh, as you can probably infer from this example and the variables that we've declared so far, and the name of this method, that this method is gonna probably incre increase the, the class size, probably the max class size, right? Um, and then we pass it some variable. So what's inside the parentheses is basically a, a variable that we end up, then when the method is invoked, we end up creating that store some value that we want to give the method so that it can do its job. In this case, we're going to pass it some number. Uh, incidentally, we're going to pass it the number five. Um, and that five is going to be used somehow within this method to do something constructive. So we have a variable that gets created when we call this method. So we're calling increase class size. We, we're basically, which means from right here, we, we hit the pause button. We drop down to uh, this point where our method exists. And the first thing that happens is we create a new variable called count. So the scope of this variable is just this method. So increase class size. Make that a little bigger. Um, the variable is called count. If we look at the data type, it's an integer. So it's an int. And the value that it gets prescribed is actually whatever we send it when we call the method. In this case, we're sending it the number five so the, the variable count that's an integer that's scoped to this particular method is going to have the value of 5 in it. All right. Now we can drop down into our code block that represents sort of the boundaries of this method. And, and what we see is we see max class size, which max class size is a global variable. We declared it up here. We see it in our list over here as a global variable. Max class size equals max class size plus count. Well, if we go look at what's stored in max class, max class size, we'll see that right now it has the value of 10. We see that count has the value of 5. And so what's going to happen here is we're going to take 10, we're going to add 5, and we're going to save it into max class size. So this will effectively become 15. All right. We then reach the end of our method, which means we're done doing whatever we needed to do inside of this method, inside of this method call. When that happens, this variable goes away. It doesn't exist anymore. And what we do is we then we return back up here. We've just completed processing this line of code, right? And basically what we've done is we've taken max class size and we've added five to it. So now we're at 15, all right? The next thing we're gonna do is go to the next line and you'll see that we are gonna call a method called drop student. It's right here. Uh, it is a, or the modifiers are public and static, just like every method we're gonna do for now. It's also a void return type, meaning it doesn't return anything. So it doesn't have to have a return statement. Uh, the name of the method is called drop student, as you might infer, it's probably going to drop a student. Um, and it also gets a variable created for it that's going to be a count. Uh, it's going to be called count, it's going to be an integer, and it's going to get assigned the value of one. So when this method gets called, we're going to create a new variable, uh, student, drop student. Um, the variable name is count. It's an integer, and the value that gets assigned to it is this number one, right? All right, so now uh, that we've set up the variable, we're gonna come inside of our code block here, and we're gonna see that student count equals student count minus count. Well, if we come and look at student count, which again is a global variable, student count is right here. It has the value of 15 in it. Count has the value of one in it. So 15 minus one is 14, so we're gonna basically say student count equals 14. So we're gonna update this variable with a 14, right? We're gonna reach the end of our code block, which means we're done processing here, and we're gonna return back up to here. Now when we do that, this does not exist anymore, it's gone, right? Can never get it back. The next line that we get to declares a Boolean variable that uh, is called capacity value. So let's go ahead and initialize that. So the scope of this variable is the main method, right? We're declaring it right here. So it's a Boolean uh, variable called capacity value. And what we're assigning to this variable is the result of this at max capacity method. So we're gonna go find our at max capacity method. 
You'll notice that uh, we still have the same modifiers, public static. The return type is Boolean, meaning it's going to return the value of either true or false. Uh, the name of the method is called at max capacity, and we don't give it anything. We don't need to give it anything in order for it to do its job. Um, all we're going to do is assess whether or not the student count is greater than or equal to the max class size. So basically what we're trying to figure out is can we admit more students to this particular class, right? Um, if we evaluate this expression, we will say that we'll see that student count right here is 14 and we'll see that max class size equals 15, right? So basically what we're saying is true or false, this is 14 greater than or equal to 15? And the answer to that would obviously be false. So we're gonna return false. This is uh, basically looks like this, right? After this gets ex this expression gets evaluated, the output is false. Our student count is less than is not greater than or equal to the max class size, um, and so we're going to return false. Now, what that basically means is you could sort of read this statement like this: boolean capacity value equals false, right? Because this method returned that we just saw returned false. And so you can almost imagine this really being false. And so all we're doing is we're saying, hey, we're creating a variable called capacity value and we're initializing it with this value of false. So we're gonna put false over here. Okay. Um, now we're done with that method, right? Uh, so we can go to the next line. Uh, the next line says about class. And what we do is we pass it capacity value, right? Capacity value is a Boolean variable we just created. Right now it has the value of false, which is great. Uh, so we're gonna go find about class. And we're gonna see that when we get to about class, the first thing we have to do is establish this Boolean variable called at capacity. So the scope of this Boolean variable about, uh, at capacity is about class, the method it's declared for, right? It's called at capacity. It's also Boolean. And when we call this method, we're passing it capacity value. So whatever is stored in capacity value, which is right here, our scope is main, is gonna be the, var the value of false, right? So when we call this and we initialize and instantiate this method, uh, basically the Boolean uh, variable called at capacity is gonna be sent this value, which is also gonna be false, right? Uh, the next thing we do inside the method is we declare a new variable. So it's still part of the, the scope is still about class, right? We're still working inside of our about class method. It's called spots left. Uh, it's an integer. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to find what value is in max class size and we're going to subtract from that student count. So max class size, if we come look at this, is 15. Student count is 14. So 15 minus 14 equals one. So spots left is gonna be initialized with a value of one in it, right? Um, then we're gonna get to uh, some print statements. So um, here, we'll do this right here. We'll say this is our, our output window, right? So what are we gonna get when we, when we run this? Uh, we're gonna get this print statement. It's gonna say class name. So we're gonna go find our variable class name. Remember it's a global variable, so it can be seen inside of this method. So class name, is a string and it has the value of isis355u. And then we're gonna concatenate that with, with professor, with professor. And then we're gonna go find our professor name. So the professor name is merit, has student count. So where student count is up here, has the value of 14 has 14 students, All right? Then we're gonna go to our next line and we're gonna print the next statement that says the class is at or above maximum capacity. And then we're gonna concatenate that with whatever stored in this variable at capacity. So we go find at capacity in our about class scope. It's a Boolean variable and it has the value of false. All right, we'll reach the end of that line. And then we're gonna do one more print statement that says there is room for, if we look for spots left, it's a variable that's local, right? We declared it up here. It's in our list over here. So spots left is an integer. It's got the value of one in it. So spots left is one. More students gets concatenated. 
in the period. There's room for one more student. Um, once we get to the end of this method call, we uh, are done, right? We're processing the code in this method. And these variables that we created that are about class scoped no longer exist. We're done processing here. We go back up here and we see that the next line uh, is the end of the main method, which means we are done, right? That's the end of our program. So what we've just done here is we've basically, uh, and essentially this all goes away, right? because um, we reached the end of our program. So what we've done here is we've just output these three simple lines of text. But as you can see, hopefully from this example of just walking through it, you can see the different pieces and parts and how they work together and how the flow of the program rolls uh, when you're using methods or subroutines or, or whatever. Um, you'll notice that there is a method in here called change professor. Um, if we had called this method, um, we would have basically taken the value that's stored in professor or the, the variable professor and we would have changed the value. So right now it has the value merit in it. If we had executed this, it would have been changed to the value and it would have had walk in it. But you'll notice that nowhere in our program through the lines of execution that we followed and we traced the entire program, right? Because this is gonna govern what we do. Um, now you could have this method be called from another method. That's perfectly fine and that's perfectly possible. But in our case here, that didn't happen. So even though this exists in our program, it's never actually executed because we never actually call this change professor method. So don't let that throw you off. Um, again, hopefully this is constructive for you. Hopefully this helps you with your assignment. Hopefully this helps you with the midterm and understanding exactly how methods do uh, work. And if you're ever unclear about what's going on um, in a method or in code that you're, you're looking at, this whole process of tracing it um, is really the best way to see that play out and give you the ability to understand exactly what's going on. Um, again, hopefully this is helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know.